So question 76 of leak code, minimum window substring. So given two strings S and T of lengths M and N respectively, return the minimum window substring of S such that every character in T, including duplicates, is included in the window. If there is no such substring, return the empty string. So the test cases will be generated such that the answer is unique. A substring is a contiguous sequence of characters within the string. So in the first example, we have Adobe Code Bank and T is equal to ABC. So we need to find the shortest substring within S that contains all the values of T. So in this, there are multiple substrings, but the shortest one is bank, which is found at the end here, containing 1B, 1A, and 1C. And that is the output that we need to give. In the second example, we have A as the output because T contains only 1A. The string itself only contains 1A. So that meets the requirement. So it meets all of the values that are in T within the string of S. And finally, in example three, we have an answer of an empty string. And the reason for that is, is T length is greater than the length of S. So we will never find two instances of A within a string that only contains one A. So could you find an algorithm that runs in OM plus N time? So let's discuss a potential solution with that time complexity. So this is a, a pretty difficult question. Um, there's so much to take into consideration here, and especially with the fact that we've got to hit OM plus N time complexity. So with this time complexity, we can have a trade-off. So we can increase our space complexity in order to hit this time complexity. And one great way of utilizing more space to improve time complexity is by using something like a map data structure when comparing two values. So we're going to have a frequency map that is going to store all the values of t and the amount of their occurrence. So we're going to have a, which is pointing to 1, b, which also has 1, and c is also going to be equal to 1. Right? And the great thing about frequency maps or map data structures is they have constant lookup. We can say that this map is the m within this time complexity, and this n, we can actually update that to be s. And that's going to be this string right here that we're going to loop through. And because we're only allowed to loop through it once, a great technique that we can use is the two pointer technique where we have a left and right pointer that way rather than traversing the string multiple times and increasing the time complexity to something quadratic we can keep it linear and compare values together so how this solution is going to work we're going to loop through this string we're going to check at each point whether the value that we're on is within the frequency map if it is we're going to decrement the value associated with that letter and once the frequency map is all equal to zero we then know we have found a substring within the string of s so we can update our minimum window substring so before we do that we need a couple more variables to take into consideration so we need a count which is going to be equal to the size of this frequency map which is three and we also need to declare our minimum window which is going to be set initially as an empty string and the great thing about setting it as an empty string is it takes care of that case where we do not find a substring within the string S because we're going to be returning this. So we will return an empty string. So let's give this solution a run through. At our right pointer, we have the letter A. Is A within the frequency map? Yes, it is. So what do we do? We decrement A to zero. Now, once A or any of these values point to zero, we can decrement the count because we have found all occurrences of that letter within the substring that we're looking for. So we found all the occurrences of A, so we can decrement the count. We only need to find two more letters, B and C, in order to find a potential solution. Now we can increment the right pointer. So right pointer moves to D, D is not in the set. We move over to O, O is not in the set. We move to B, B is within the set, so we decrement B, B goes to zero. So we found the required amount of B within our string. So we can decrement count now, so count goes to one and we can increment the right pointer. So we go to E, E is not within the map, so we can move along. We go over to C, C is within the map, so we decrement C and now C is equal to zero. So we decrement the count and we move the right pointer along one more. Now here is where we have to add additional logic because count is equal to zero. We have found all occurrences of A, B and C. So we have found one A, one B and one C. Those are the requirements that are needed for T within this substring. So we have a, B, and C. So we have this as a substring. 
and I say it's Adobe C rather than Adobe CO because we are going to slice from the left pointer to the right pointer. So S dot slice left right is going to give us Adobe C because the right value here within slice is non-inclusive. Okay, great. So we have found a substring, a potential solution. So we need to update the minimum window to that solution. But we have another issue here. We have an empty string here. And usually what we do in a case like this is we compare the minimum length of the minimum window with the length of this substring we have. But we can't do that here because the minimum window is much shorter than the substring and it will always be the result. So we need to create another variable. So we have a len variable and this is going to be set initially to infinity. So whatever length substring we have as our initial substring, it will always be less than that. So minimum window will always update to the first substring we find. So we can do that now. We can update our substring to equal Adobe C. And now we have to carry out a sliding window technique in order to increment the left pointer to find all possible substrings within this string. So while count is equal to zero, we check the map. If the map has the value at the left pointer, so it has A, so we increment A to one. And if this value increases, or if any of these values increase above zero, we can increment the count, basically saying that we need to find one occurrence of A to find another substring now, and we can increment the left pointer. So once we have done that, we can repeat the process with the right pointer. So we can check if O is within the frequency map. It's not, so we can move that along. D is not within the frequency map. E is not within the frequency map. So we get to B. B is within the frequency map. And what do we do when we find a value within the frequency map? We decrement it. So B moves to minus one. Now, usually we decrement count, but B is not equal to zero. B is equal to minus one. So we have two occurrences of B within the substring. So we do not decrement count because the only value we're currently looking for is A. We want to decrement this to zero. So we can just carry on. We can move the right pointer to A. We have finally found A. We can decrement that to zero. And now we can decrement count to zero. We can increment the right pointer. And now that count is equal to zero, we have found another substring. So D all the way through to A here. So we have A, we have B, and we have C. We can check if this is less than the minimum window. It's not. So we carry out the sliding window technique. We check to see if this point here is within the frequency map. It's not. We move it along. O is not within the frequency map. B is within the frequency map. So we increment B. So this goes to zero. However, B is not greater than zero. So we do not increment count because remember, we still have an instance of B over here. So we move the left pointer along to E. That is not within the frequency map. We move it along to C. That is within the frequency map. So we update C to one. And now C is greater than zero. We can increment count. Then we can increment the left pointer. And now we can repeat the process on the right side. So is N within the frequency map? No, it's not. So we move the right pointer along. Right is at C. C is within the frequency map. So we decrement C. Great, that's now equal to zero. We decrement count. Now count is equal to zero. So we have a current minimum window substring, which is equal to this string right here. Is this less than Adobe C? No, it's not. So we check the left pointer. We see if that's within the frequency map. No, it's not. We move along. We now have a new substring which is equal to this substring. Is that less than the minimum window? No, it's not. So we increment the left pointer and we check if the left pointer is within the frequency map. No, it's not. But at this point, we have a new window substring. eBank, is that less than minimum window? Yes, it is. So we can update that to be equal to eBank. Now we check to see whether E is within the frequency map. It's not. So we move the left pointer along. We now have a new substring which is equal to bank, and that is less than eBank. So we can update that, and we check to see whether B is within the frequency map. It is, so we update B to one. B is now greater than zero, so we update count to one, and then we increment the right pointer, and then that is out of bounds. So we exit this loop, and we return bank. So time complexity for this algorithm is, as stated in the question, O T plus S, where T is all the values within the T string, because we need to create this frequency map. And S is 
all the letters within the S string. Okay, so let's start writing this out. So let's initialize the map data structure. So map is equal to new map. Let's loop through the values of T and create that frequency map. So that letter T. So if the map doesn't have letter, then we can initialize it with one. So map.set letter one. Else we just need to add to the current value within the map. So map.set letter map.get letter plus one. So that'll populate the frequency map. Then we need to initialize all the variables. So the left and right pointer. Len, which is going to be equal to infinity. Count, which is going to be equal to map.size. So the map has, <clears throat> and the count, which is going to equal to map.size. So map has a size property, which will be equal to three in the first example. And then we also need min window to be initialized as an empty string. And then we can start the loop. So while right is less than s dot length, we can extract the letter at the right pointer. So our letter is equal to s dot right, make it a bit easier to read. If map has our letter, so if the frequency map has the letter at the right pointer, we can decrement the value of that letter within the frequency map. And then we can do an additional check to see whether that value is now equal to zero. We can decrement count if it is. And then we just need to increment the right pointer there. So while the count is equal to zero, so we have found a substring. If right minus left is less than len, which we will be updating. So the first time we check right minus left, it will be checking against infinity. So it will have to be updated. We'll update the length to equal right minus left. So this is the current length of the substring. And then we need to update minimum window variable to equal s dot slice and slice from left up to, but not including the right pointer, because remember we incremented right on line 32. Then we can use the sliding window technique and increment the left pointer here. So let's extract the left pointer to make it easier to read. And let's check to see whether the map has the value at the left pointer. If it does, we can increment the value within the frequency map by one. And then we can do an additional check to see whether the value at the letter is greater than zero. And if it is, we can increment count. Then we just need to increment the left pointer. And finally, we can return min window. Let's give this a run. Okay, let's submit it. And there you have it. 